Fox 23, 2021, 2K, 2-1. What are three things you learned yesterday? Was any information different than what you learned as a child? Number three, how did Americans moving to Mexico look at the Mexicans? Number four, would you be angry if land grants were given away when you had lived on that land your whole entire life? And number five, would you move to Mexico to start a better life for you and your family? Answer this, your daily checkpoint, time starts right meow. Come to bed. It's more you can see. It runs on thick inside my face through all the hot it can paint and everything I've come to bed. It's more you can say. All right, what are three things you learned yesterday? Let's go with romance, romance. Three things you learned. I didn't learn anything. Why not? It was all new, it was old information? So you received new information, you just didn't learn it. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Uh, John Jesus, what are three things you learned yesterday? Uh, Mexico. Oh, oh, hold on, you're on mute, papas. Mexico wanted to allow immigrants and uh, then the uh, um, Americans kept coming in to the point that they, they like outnumbered the Mexicans. Then they tried to halt immigration, and then the Americans thought that they were like denying their rights to, to go to their land. Good, 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 good. That's what we're going into today. You can go ahead and meet yourself. Um, and you know what, John Joseph, you kind of almost answered it, but how did Americans moving to Mexico see the Mexicans? Uh, didn't they see them as like, uh, like dirty or something? Like they didn't like them? Uh, WL, would you be angry if you lived in Mexico or in Texas at the time, right? Uh, the Cato word for, you know, whatever. We're not going to go into the Cados because you don't know, you don't remember the Cados. You don't remember the Caruncuas. Always remember the Caruncuas. Those are some crazy cats. Um, would you be angry if you lived in Texas, you know, with you and your family and your parents were born here and your grandparents, generations, and you owned all this land and then Mexico just starts giving it away for free? You'd be really pissed off. And then they're just giving it away to these Americans who are coming in and not accepting you, making you feel like the outcast. Okay. All right. Um, but also number five, Davia, would you, if you were an American, would you move to Mexico to start a better life for you and your family? Mm -hmm. Yeah, possibly. Yeah. Like, you, depending on the land. Yeah. So you. Yeah. Well, what about the hill country? It's not really that great on the crops, but you yeah, have yeah. access to water. Yeah. So like, so you can like, um, um, like turn cattle into the land. Mm -hmm. There you can like, if you produce, or you can get a lot more cattle. Yeah. 
Yeah. yeah. So you would be angry, <laughs> or you said pissed. You would be pissed if you were a Mexican living in the land. But you, you would also be very excited to take that if you were an American. So you're on both sides. Fair enough. It's hard to choose when you're looking into history because it's always to say, oh, I would never do that. But people always see it from one side. What if the opposite occurred? And then most people would be like, oh, you know what? I, I, I know y'all did this with the conquistadores. Would you do it in their place? Most of you said, yes, you would come to the new world and conquer and kill the people and take the gold. Um, Cause you said, oh, well, you know, other people were doing it. Um, yeah. And then uh, what was the other thing? Uh, not the Mars mission trip. Uh, there was another essay y'all wrote that was very similar that y'all said, yeah, I would, I would do that. And I'm like, mm, okay. Um, speaking of Mars mission trip. Look out, students will complete their warm up. Students will complete their warm up. Warm up. There you go. Oh, that was a good one. Warm up. Oh, that one's better. Chalk. Students will turn in their late work. Speaking of Mars mission trip, students will turn in their late work. I don't want to say names, all of you. Students will complete the exit ticket. Students will receive the work of home, courtesy of Gabriel Arvalo. Yesterday, we had a nice discussion after school about more homework. That was a great idea. I loved it. I He's love lying. it. I am not lying. Yes, you are. Oh my God. Oh, nah, nah. Students will read about the life in the American military and students will read about life in the Mexican military. Remember with Mexican American studies, I do try and teach you two points because it's not just the history of Mexico. It's not just the history of America. It's a history of Mexican American. So it's the history of Mexico and America and this conglomerate that it built. So I can't just teach you this is Mexican history or this is American history. So it's always nice to get two sides, just like I answered uh, those questions for the four and five. Yeah, four and five, two sides. All right. Picture of the day, Mr. Dominguez. And man, that must have been like 45 years ago. I was like 20 or 21 years old. That was a long time ago, 65. So that I must have been 20 or 21. So that was, yes. I'm, I just told you I'm 20, 20 or 21. I can't remember the exact age. <laughs> Yeah, that was me doing city year. Actually, so next to me is my friend Peter Chen. Oh, you're not going to get to see it. My friend Peter Chen and I, uh, we'll be doing interviews because um, that's kind of your, your job towards the end of the nine weeks for next nine weeks. Um, but uh, we do interviews in personal finance literacy. And one of the interviews, I'm actually interviewing him this week. He just needs to get back to me on a day and it's already Tuesday. Uh, when he's available. So my friend Peter Chen, a small boy from Dallas, makes it all the way into grad school. I mean, sorry, goes to Wash U and then goes to med school and is a pretty successful doctor right now in New York City. He lives in New Jersey now because he's trying to buy a house in New York. So it's too expensive. And if you're in personal finance literacy, you see that it's very expensive. So, yeah. So he's uh, buying a house. Very good for him. I'm very proud of my friend Peter Chen. We've been friends for, I guess, like 40 years or something, right? Um, just like the song we were listening to, Blood Thicker Than Water. Okay, uh, grades, don't be a failure. My grades will be turned into the front office at 8 a.m. on Friday, March 26, 2021. That's right, this nine weeks ends this week and we're already Tuesday. I can take late work, but your assignments cannot be turned in later than Thursday, March 25th, 2021, 2K21 by 8 a.m. in the morning. Now, I told you about this yesterday. I just put it in a slide today. Um, I haven't graded late work since last Thursday. I was supposed to do it during my conference yesterday, and I ended up getting pretty busy. And uh, I had a meeting. I have a meeting after school, and I have a meeting during my conference. 
but I'm still going to stay a little bit late. Oh, and I got to show that kid how to do financial aid, right, Jacqueline? Okay. Perfect. She didn't remember. Um, so yeah, you know, I, 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 I'm busy too. So I don't want to hear that you couldn't do late work because you were busy because I'm, I'm working three jobs. So um, yeah, I will be uh, grading in late work. It's pretty easy when it's late because it's already done um, and there's not many people. So if you have any work, I will still grade it, but make sure it's turned in by March 25th, 2021 at 8am. 8.01, I'm not grading it because guys, Canvas time stamps things. Gabriel can turn it in right now and it'll say turned in March 23rd at 10, I think it's 10.15, 10.15. It's, it's 10.30? Oh, 10.13. Okay, it'll say Gabriel turned it in at 10.13. So I can, I know when you turn things in. Don't say like, I tried earlier. No, you didn't. You didn't even do it earlier. Okay, cool. Devin, Devin Llewellyn. Yes, but it's, this class is not 18 weeks. So the final exam would be the end of the next weeks. A midterm. Okay, so about the midterm. I decided to cut it. What? The actual exam part. Because of SNOVID, that pushed everything back a whole week. And I've had to cut parts and pieces of this. It was going to be another research project. But since you just had a research project, I mean, I guess I could give you another research project. Whoa. Maybe, maybe. Um, I decided to cut it so we can fit in more material instead of you researching. Uh, I don't need that many. Plus, I've lived so much. Guys, it would be crazy. Like, all of you would have different biographies. All right, yesterday we talked about an essay. You had to go and create an essay and write one up about your family wanting to, I think your dad's catching a, a job. Yes, your dad lost his job in America and lost all his fortune. And you and your family need this opportunity to ask for, uh, Stephen F. Austin, Stephen Fuller Austin. Yes, the same Stephen Fuller Austin um, about moving to Texas, right? So that hopefully you turned in that essay because uh, yeah, that counts. Discussion questions, would you personally move? Um, would you want to move north to North Mexico and receive free land? Damiel said yes, he would. What about Devin Llewellyn? Devin? Gonna be, I'm going to be honest with you, I wouldn't because America is great. And they didn't have cars back in the day. They didn't have what? Cars back in the day. Yeah, they have Vikings. Okay. Thank you, Devin Lou Allen. Uh, WL, since you said yes, you would, would you travel alone or with somebody? You're on mute. I would travel alone. You would? Yeah, mainly because, like, to explore, like, the land. Okay. And, like, to, like, uh, commune with, like, the local, the, the local um, citizens. Yeah. And talk. So so you're saying if you have a family, uh, three children, three kids, two boys, one girl, and a wife, you would leave them to come to Mexico, to North Mexico, and live here to make more money so you can bring back home. Yes, and okay. then uh, like I would, I would prepare the land, yeah. and once it's like ready, I would call, I would, I would like telegram for them, yeah, and have them come here, like come to Texas. Do you think people that immigrate here to America do the same thing? To where traditionally like the male role will come and try and make enough money so that the family can make them. Mm, yeah. 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 Jacqueline, do you think that still happens? Yeah. It's like in place of yeah. Yeah. Jacqueline, number three, would you mind that the land has been taken away from the indigenous people? I would mind because that was their land before and I don't feel like taking that. Mm -hmm. Okay. Would you would you be moving the Texas to receive the free land? Probably not. Okay. So you would stay in America? Yeah. Even at the time America was going through a depression and times are tough. Yeah. Okay. Uh Jacqueline, could you move away from home now and move to another city? Uh right now? Yeah. Yeah. 
You could move to like, I don't know, Providence, Rhode Island. Mm -hmm. You could. Okay. You could move to like Billings, Montana. Yeah. Okay. And you'd be successful without your parents. Um, I could find a job. Okay. All right. Cool, 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 cool. So Jacqueline, why do you think people leave their home now to a new place? Uh, so they can find a better life for themselves. No. Oh, did I have you on the computer? All right. Well, there's some questions. Um, obviously, in better times, we would expect to answer more questions, but um, here in Echo, is that Gabriel? Gabriel, do you have mute on? Mm -hmm. Oh, I'm oh, oh, telling your headphones. Okay. Okay. All right, Stephen F. Austin. Yes, the same Stephen F. Austin from the picture before. Here he is, um, and we're looking at Stephen F. Austin. We see him looking mighty brave. You see another man looking up to him. Uh oh, what do we see here? What do you think this is, Gabriel? Yes, who am I circling? Oh, a black person. Okay, a black person. But he's a slave. Okay, a slave. There we go, Papa. So we finally got it. Now, is he inside the house or outside the house? He's outside, he's outside the house. So we don't know if he's a slave. I mean, it doesn't say slave on his t shirt, it doesn't have a caption that says he is a slave. You know, it could just be his random black friend hanging outside his window, right? So. Apparently there's like a Viking looking dude next to him. Oh, this, that transition did not look well. Okay, Stephen of Austin, the success of Austin's colony attracted more land speculators. Huh? The guy, I, yeah, we already went over that. Some were looking for a new life, some were escaping from the law. Ooh, Ooh. yeah. And others were looking for a chance to grow rich. By 1830, the population had swelled to about 30,000 with Americans, I forgot a space, outnumbering the Tejanos six to one. Daviel, you had something to say. Like, 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 you're, you're on mute. Oh. I was thinking like, since some of them were escaping the law, most of them could have been part of gangs and like were outlaws. Yeah. Like, and like in that, like I mean, they did like um, a, a probably a bank job or like the score went bad, and they're probably going there to escape. Okay. Uh, that didn't go well. <laughs> oh no! Ah, there we go. Look, I try and be all fancy, and it's. It froze. It froze. Uh, we're we're going down. Nope, that was it. Oh my God. Okay, rising tensions in Texas in 1829. Remember, this is still Mexico. Uh, U.S. I mean, Texas hadn't fought its independence yet. The Mexican government outlawed slavery. So remember, they were very upset. Gabriel, are you writing notes? Yeah, yeah, we are. Do you have your journal with you? Gabriel, I gave you a journal so you can keep in this class. It's your class journal. Gabriel, where's your journal? Is it is it a home journal or a class journal? Where Where is that journal supposed to be put? In your backpack. Is it in your backpack right now? Okay. Great, pencils and pens. What are you going to write it on? I have paper, do you? No, let me get you paper. Hold on, guys. I don't want to say names, but Gabriel needs paper. Do that. Great, bring a journal next time. Okay, 1829, the Mexican government outlawed slavery. Now, you remember yesterday, slavery was looked down upon by Mexico. So Spain enslaved Mexico, so Mexico overthrows them, right? 
in the, in the fight for independence. So Mexico is not going to want slavery. Well, once they start inviting Texans over, they're leaving the American South where slavery is still legal. And Mexico's a little upset. It's kind of like, Mexico's like, oh, did they bring in slaves? We should put a stop to that. We'll just go and tell people, like, stop, stop bringing in slaves. Well, they don't. And then they say, okay, well, fine. If you're going to come to Mexico, you can, like, and we catch you with slaves, you forfeit your property. We are going to take away the slaves and set them free. That doesn't stop them. So now Mexico flat out puts in the law, no slavery. Many people probably don't even realize that Mexico got rid of slavery before the United States, right? Not something they usually teach you in US history. The settlers wanted to keep their slaves so they could grow cotton, oh boy. And it makes sense. I mean, we look at the American South, American South definitely wanted slaves to grow cotton. So. Texas, very similar to the landscape of the rest of the American South, wanted to keep their slaves to grow cotton. The Americans also didn't want to learn Spanish or follow the Mexican laws, Jesus Christ. Three rules they had to follow. Speak Spanish, or actually it said learn Spanish. It didn't really say speak Spanish. Learn Spanish, be Catholic. That one, it did say be Catholic and be a good moral character. Well, they're not learning Spanish and very few settlers had converted to Catholicism, so they're not they're not being very Catholic-y. So that means that the last one is be good moral characters, but they're keeping their slaves, and Mexico is saying, don't bring slaves. Cop, stop calling them slaves. Well, seems like the Texans are, are, well, the Americans moving to Texans don't want to follow any of the three laws that they had to follow. And they feel like now that the Mexican government is infringing on their rights. In 1829, the government closed the state to further American immigration. Mexico says, yeah, that's enough. We're tired of these Americans coming in, smuggling people in, bringing slaves. Some of them might be good people, but right now we're going to say no more to American immigration. There is no more allowed immigrants to America. I mean, from America. Texans had to start paying taxes for the first time. Oh, you can imagine how well that's going to go. Did the Americans like to pay taxes to the British? No. Yeah, people still don't like to pay taxes. Right, you have a lot of billionaires out there who find these loopholes because they don't want to pay taxes, right? And now Texans have to start paying taxes. Oh no, time for war. The Mexican president, General Antonio Lopez de Santa Ana, that's not even his full name, he got like four more names, sent more Mexican troops to Texas. If you have someone angry at the military, or the government, right? And at that time, the military was the government. And you see more military troops showing up, it's gonna irritate that person. It's kind of like when your mom's in a bad mood and you do something wrong, you're gonna irritate mom even more. Moms don't get irritated. They're always very calm and peaceful, right? Right, guys? No. Well, they're never wrong, right? It's always, you're, you're the one that's wrong. They, they are sometimes wrong. No, they're not. They're not wrong sometimes. Not wrong and they're right. They have to be their parents. Isn't that their job to be right? But not a lot of the time. Or sometimes they're wrong and they don't admit it when they're wrong. They, just blame they would never blame their errors on you guys. Oh no. No, not yours. No, no, no. This one's on YouTube. They, they definitely are never wrong. No. <laughs> Texans began talking about breaking away from Mexico. Shocking, right? America is founded from British colonists. America has to pay taxes to Britain. America's like, yeah, right, we're breaking away. We're making our own country. Americans go to Mexico. The Americans got to pay taxes. Well, I guess Texans have to pay taxes. Oh, that is a tricky sentence to say. And with that same thought of, yeah, right, I'm breaking away. Stephen F. Austin was jailed. The Texans did revolt. 
He goes to jump. Stephen also goes to Mexico, right? Um, it's kind of like if uh, almost like a terrorist is in the country illegally. Everyone's looking for him. He goes to the White House. It's like you kind of just turned yourself in. And Stephen also is is telling them like, you know, guys, you got to make it easier on us. You're infringing on our rights. We have these rights in America. Like this is how it should be. And Mexico, I remember Santa Ana is now a dictator because he's already upset at everyone in the country. And he's like, yeah, right, you're inciting a riot. Kind of like charging him as a terrorist, throws him in jail. In jail, Stephen F. Austin writes this letter, my dearest Texans, right? Um, this is no time to, you know, whatever, whatever. We need to break away. We need to form a revolution. <laughs> Uh, you know, and I, I try and plan a trip to uh, Austin so we can go see the Texas State Mu Museum at, uh, the, well, it's right across the street from UT. I don't know the name of it, but I know it's the Texas State Museum. Like, I'm, there's a, like an official name. And you get this little sticker. It's free, right? You just show up and it's free and they give you a little sticker and you can walk around the building and they've got a bunch of stuff from Texas history, but you know, COVID, so that's fun. Um, Santa Ana doesn't like this revolt. He's, he's <laughs> this guy starting a, a war from jail. So Santa Ana led 6,000 troops to Texas to put down this small little revolt. You might have heard about this little revolt. You live in the city, well, actually, y'all live in the suburb of this major city, seventh largest city in the nation. The Alamo. Oh, okay. Yeah, oh, number to shut up, the Alamo, I've been there. We do also take a field trip to the Alamo in this class, but you know, COVID. The first battle between the Texans and the Mexicans, because there were many battles, wasn't just, you know, you got the Green to wait, we're, we're just gonna even talk about them all. Um, took place at an old mission that was used as a fort, it was called the Alamo. And actually, most of you probably know the Alamo because of this little iconic, you know, square, the lift up, little thing here, and then square. And then this, this is new. And what I mean by new is that wasn't even put on until after Texas joined the United States. I don't remember the exact years put in, but that was not present at the Alamo. In fact, if you want to think of it this way, um, this is kind of like what the Alamo looked like at the time. Yeah. Looks a lot different now, huh? Yeah. We'll just make a jagged edge everywhere. And so that's what the Alamo similarly would have looked like. I mean, not, not exactly to historical measurements, because I just kind of marked it and drew on that. But, yeah. but that little thing, that little symbol, that little circular thing, that's very symbolic. You know, you can put that on the side of a building. People are going to say, oh, yeah, that's the Alamo. In fact, there's a lot of businesses called Mission. There's Mission Air Conditioning, Mission Cars, Mission This, Mission That. And yeah, I mean, the San Antonio missions, they just use a part of that image and people know that's the Alamo, we're known around the world. Ah, I hate when that happens. Okay. There you go, change. Bro, what is it done? Don't change, stay cool, keep in touch. There were only 183 guarding the Alamo. The Mexican army had 1,800 men. Uh, yeah, shocker, of course they were going to die. They knew they were going to die. 183 to 1,800. Even if I killed like five guys before they killed me, you wouldn't have enough, like at all, okay? Uh, there were 183 guarding the Alamo on 1,800 men. Uh, the Texans did hold off for 12 days. It was a siege, which means that... There's the Alamo, 
And the Mexican army went around the Alamo and said, no more food, no more water, nothing's getting in, no one's getting in or out. And it's fine to be there, but um, once you run out of food, it's like, okay, let's do or die now. On the 13th day, Santa Ana ordered his men to storm the fortress. Does anyone know what he said? Anybody? 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 No? He said, he said, I'm going to have my eggs inside that place. <laughs> Isn't that crazy? Yeah. He's like, I'm hungry for breakfast. <laughs> I will eat my eggs in that place. All right. Some wording of that, but yeah, anyway. When it was over, all but five Texans were dead. All but five. The men not killed in the battle were then executed. Great. So you survived the battle of the Alamo. And they kill you anyway. Texans were, they were executed. I just told you. Well, they're enemies of the state. If, um, let's say you're in Washington, D.C., and people start revolting and shooting the place and trashing the Capitol and setting it on fire and storming the Capitol, I mean, you're starting a war, right? Yeah, War of 1812 when the British came and then they... Oh, yeah. Those are enemies of the state. And so, you know, you're going to want to show them a lesson. You want to prove to them that nobody can just come in and try and take over the country, right? That would seem crazy. Texans were shocked by the slaughter at the Alamo and vowed to fight for their freedom. 183 men lost their lives. And now Texas is going to revolt. You know what's crazy? is that this wasn't happenstance. 183 men didn't just happen to show up at the same time for this big party. They knew that this was going down. So where was, where was everyone else who was like, oh, they killed those guys? Yeah, no kidding. It's like if they sent me, like Judson High School went to war with Judson Elementary. And I'm there and I'm against all the fifth graders, you know, and yeah, I'm going to take down a few fifth graders because they are in fifth grade. I mean, they're also my height, so. Um, but how many how many fifth graders are there in a, in a school? Like 200 or something, 300? They're, if they all rush me at once, there's no way I or anybody can fight off two or 300, you know, fifth graders. So yeah, I'm going to go down and then everyone's going to be like, ooh, we're sending everyone now. Well, where were you when I was looking for help? 183 men didn't have to die. Although a lot of people were like, ugh, this is all you got? 183? And they're like, actually, we got 185, but one of them is a lady and a child. So, you know, we can't, can't keep them there. Yeah, they were like, ugh, uh, you know, I'd love to, but I'm kind of busy that, like I got a baby shower and a king set that day. I would definitely join you on you overtaking an old mission that is kind of meaningless. I, you know, I got to cut the yard. Saturday, it's a Saturday. Oh, I don't know, man. I, I got I to gotta change the oil. Uh, I'm a little busy that day. Let me know how it goes, though. Um, terrible graphics. Look at this. This is. OK, so there's supposed to be a picture there. Oh, there we go. This is a famous portrait of a battle from the Alamo. And look at everyone fighting these rotten Mexicans trying to kill these proud Texans. We hear this often, proud Texans. And then people drive around in their Toyota Tundras with the little Texas flag on the side, right, of the vehicle and you'll see them. I mean, Toyota is a Japanese company. It's not a Texan company. So they should put a Japanese flag, right, in theory. Um, that money is definitely going to Japan, but you know it was built in Texas, and we hear a lot of people say "built in Texas," very proud of this Texas. In fact, a lot of people are moving to Texas from California, from Florida, and Silicon Valley. So you have a lot of people from different um, ages, different races, different um, income brackets moving to Texas. We already heard "gone to Texas" once. It looks like they're gone to Texas again, but. 
here they are fighting bravely and proudly against these Mexican soldiers trying to step on their freedom. The only problem with this is it seems unrealistic. So they had rifles. They weren't great shots still. You know, you could be a pretty good marksman, but still like miss half your shots. So we're looking at this guy right here leading the charge. Does he even have a rifle? He's got a sword. Now, I know you're thinking he's got a sword, which means that someone has to get up on the ladder, get up there, and he will strike him down with his mighty sword. Thank you. The Mexican soldiers have rifles. This guy standing up with a sword. I don't know how many of you would like to go to war, have no sword, I mean, sorry, have no gun and with just a sword like, send them one by one. Yeah, that, no. More than likely he would have been shot down. He's literally a target and he can't fire back. This guy over here is swinging. It looks like he might've shot his gun. He might be out of ammo and is swinging. Now I know this could be some of the founders of the, I mean, the, the heroes of the Alamo, right? Heroes. Um, and uh, it could be David Crockett. I mean, it doesn't say, but it could be, you know, Jim Bowie. Um, it could be you know, any of these guys. Um, maybe, maybe, I don't know. This guy's got a rock. Yeah, so that rock's gonna stab somebody, but you're outnumbered 1,800 to 183. Cool. You, maybe you kill someone with one rock. <laughs> There's still 1,799 men left to go. You're going to need something more than a sword and a rock, right? And then uh, you see that here they are, you know, trying to proudly defend the Alamo. That's a very biased picture. Whose image, whose viewpoint is this image painted in? Does anyone know? Americas, right? Or Texan, right? These, we love these guys fighting till the death. That's an American point of view, right? The Mexicans are bad dudes and these guys are good dudes. It's not a Mexican point of view. Why would they paint it like that? They would have painted something like this. Oh, there we go, like this. Oh, did it go through? Yep, yeah, it went through. Oh my God, it's still moving. All right, it would have been something like this. This would have been a little bit more accurate. The defenders of the Alamo, and you can see the little top of the Alamo's gone, would have been killed and annihilated. And, and yeah, they lasted 13 days. And then the battle happened and they, you know, they got killed. This would have been a more realistic picture. The Alamo, they had, uh, I can't remember how many, how many um, cannons they had. It was like four or five. I could be wrong. They could have had 30 or 40, but I don't think they did. And it's been a few years since I went to the Alamo and heard their story, their version of it. When you go to the Alamo, there are different versions of the Alamo that, that speak about what happened, right? Depends on who you ask. Um, so yeah, they'll say, oh, we only had one cannon and we held off the Mexicans for 13 days. I don't think you had one cannon. Yeah. The Battle of San Jacinto, the aftermath. Santa Ana had over 300 more Texans executed at Goli. Uh, oh, it should say Goliath, not Golidad. Oops, I got a spelling error. The Texan general, Sam Houston, gathered more troops. Eight hundred in all. It included Tejanos, American settlers, volunteers from the United States, and many free and enslaved Americans. Now, there's a lot of promises of what it is to be Texan. We've covered the difference between white versus Anglo, right? If you joined in the revolution, you would be considered Anglo. 
and you can have the right to own property. You could have the right to land, even though you're Mexican born. So you're like, man, I get treated better than under a dictatorship. I'm going to fight for the freedom. A lot of enslaved Africans, Americans, and a lot of uh, free slaves thought because if they were to make Texas its own country, slavery would be abolished. Well, kind of. So they gave people the hope that if they were to win, they would free you as a slave because you fought, you know, you've earned it. Do you think that they were going to free the slaves, Gabriel? No. No, he said no. Devin? No. Uh, Jacqueline? No. Roman? No. Daviel? John Jesus? So the unanimous no in the class. I mean, I, I wasn't there. I couldn't tell you their intentions, but maybe. Mm -hmm. They met Santana and San Jacinto. Their battle cry was, remember the Alamo. It was over 18 minutes. More than half the Mexican army was killed. Santa Ana was forced to sign a treaty giving Texas its freedom. With the Battle of San Jacinto, Texas was now, oh, another space, I forgot, man. Yeah. Texas was now an independent country, kind of. So Santa Ana was a dictator, right? He was a dictator. And he owed money to the government, to the military. So Joe Biden controls, right? So he's the president, he's the commander in chief. He controls all of the military. What happens if Joe Biden doesn't pay the military? How many, how many people would continue fighting all these wars if the military stops getting paid? Not a lot. You want me to put my life on the line and you're not paying me? Or if they stop feeding the military? Ooh. A lot of people would be very angry, right? If they stop giving the military their benefits. Well, under the dictatorship and the country's running broke, Santa Ana's like, I'm not paying all of you, just not yet. Like I owe you, right? You're like, you know, in a few months, I'll, you know, make a few payments to you. And people are like, uh, no. <laughs> so here you are in the Mexican army, not getting paid, no food, and the Texans come up and like, we are going to kill you unless you surrender. Do you think you're going to fight for your freedom? No, you're going to be like, you know what, bro? I'll go to your jail. Like, this guy doesn't even pay us. I don't want to be here. I don't want to take this land. I'm from the other side of Mexico, and I only joined this to make a better life for me and my family. I can't even send food or money home. Yeah, sure, I'll be taken as a prisoner. So Santa Ana's army starts to dissolve and Santa Ana, so it's alleged he was hiding in a bush. And I think Devin Llewellyn is the one that said that. Some people say he was hiding in a tree. Some people say he was fighting bravely. He had a wooden leg. Um, it, uh, there's a video we're supposed to watch, but let's not even get into the financial part of it. Um, I would love to show you the video, but this this corporation wants to make money off of teachers and they want me to pay like $400 for this 20 minute documentary. I don't have money and they want to charge a school and the school, we don't, I mean, it's, it's a documentary for 20 minutes made by some amateur filmmaker. It's like a dude with a high eight, I'm like, come on, 400 bucks. So I might've had some words with this company. But anyway, um, yeah, uh, it's a great movie, and I wish I could show it to you. And I'm gonna—I'm still trying to find a way. I'm working with a librarian to find a way to get you to see that movie. It's a short, sorry, not a movie, documentary, um, because it's a—it's a great way of looking at how Santa Ana's leg represents America today and Mexico's relations with America today. It's a—it's actually pretty good for the 20 minute. Um, the theme is there. And it's about students from St. Mary's University here in San Antonio, Texas, that go to Chicago to try and retrieve it. It's called the Land of Lincoln. Yeah, but we don't have 400 bucks and I'm not paying for it. I don't have 400 bucks. Okay, so here he is, Santa Ana. Allegedly, he was laying down because, well, you know, he's got a wooden leg. Some people claim that he took, he, his leg was taken as a sign of disrespect. I don't know if it was that bad, but again, I wasn't there, but here's a portrait of him laying down, 
before, um, I don't know, uh, General Sam Houston. The Lone Star Republic. I think this is the last slide with notes. Yes. In 1836, Texas declared itself the Lone Star Republic. Sam Houston was elected as president. It makes sense. He was the one who led the military into victory. It would be. It would make sense that he would be the first, the country's first president. George Washington led the United States into the American Revolution. Got, a, got himself thrown in jail a few times. Oops, French and Indian War, look that up. Um, and then was he elected the country's first president kind of after the Constitutional um, Convention, um, but under, there was like 10 or 11 leaders before George Washington, right? So he wasn't really the first president, but you know, he was the first president of the Constitutional Convention. Uh, some Americans wanted Texas to be part of the United States. Some people were afraid of Texas becoming a slave state. Others, a war with Mexico. Obviously, Santa Ana goes back to Mexico. People were fearful that he was going to come back with even more troops. I mean, that does make sense. Britain came back, right? The War of 1812, right? Um, it, it just happens. And both would eventually happen. The war with the US-Mexican War. I mean, obviously, that was a war. Um, Texas did become a slave state. It did join the South. Texas only lasted 10 years, 1836 to 1846. Because, Davio, you answered it yesterday. What is the hardest part for a new country? Money. Money. You got to pay for things. Great. Sam Houston's president. Are we paying him? Are we paying the treasurer? What money do we have? How is tech? We have a lot of cattle land. Cattle. It takes a while, right? You got to wait for them to grow up. You got to graze the land, all that. You got to have the people who know how to work the land. If I'm, if I'm um, a member of Senate, right, and I lose an election in, let's just say, Tennessee, and I move to Texas, do I know how to work the land? Maybe, maybe not, right? Yeah. If I'm a poker player on the run and I move to Texas, do I not, do I know how to work the land? Maybe, maybe not. I don't know. It depends. What were you doing before? The work is always there. The work is still there. Okay. Speaking of work, the work of home. Oh, look at that. It's like I planned what I was going to say. No, but chat up. Chat up. Read, annotate every major paragraph on the submission of paper. Come up with the three questions that you found interesting. We'll discuss these questions as a class on Monday. So we forget. I lost it. I forget it. I don't know. It's not acceptable. This is the was it was it uh it was a it was a 15 pages or 16 pages for you to read. I gave it to you yesterday. Society in America in in America or society in yeah, Mon I'm about to say those things. You're about to say those things. Yeah. Good. Be prepared. Yeah. Be prepared. Okay. So that is. Um, the homework for today, but also what Mexican life in the military. Read and answer the following questions: What struggles do you think the soldiers had to endure? Why was you don't have to write these down? These are in Canvas. This is part of your assignment already in Canvas. Um, what? Why was music so important? What was healthcare like? And what were the roles of women? This is Mexican life in the military, but you're also learning American life in the military. Read and answer the following questions. What were the educational requirements? What was a typical diet? What was the healthcare like? What kind of fun were they getting into? Uh-oh, F-U-N fun. Like a pop quiz on Thursday, what? That would be crazy. <laughs> you wanna have fun, right? That's right, this class is never fun. Is it fun? No, it's not fun. We don't, we don't have fun in this class. And your exit ticket. Go ahead and write these down in your journal. What was the battle cry at San Jacinto? How many Mexicans were at the battle? How many Mex How many Texans were at the battle? How many Texans survived the battle? What happened to them? And for two, three, and four, I'm talking about the Alamo. I'm talking about the Alamo. Oh, and five. Two, three, four, and five. All right, while you're answering the exit ticket, I just want to go over a reminder. Actually, you know what? This is going to end the YouTube videos, so smell you later. Okay? But...